Hello. In this presentation, I demonstrate how to use the process macro to test for simple parallel and sequential mediation using models 4 and 6. A copy of this PowerPoint can be downloaded from the link under the video description. Please consider downloading it as it goes into more detail than I will provide in the video. Also, a link to the data is provided under the video description as well. All diagrams in this PowerPoint were drawn using the Amos program. These are to illustrate the models being tested, so just keep in mind that process does not actually produce these diagrams. If you find the video and materials useful, please take time to like the video and share it with others, and also please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. So these are the models that we are going to be testing in this video. The first model is a simple mediation model where we have the effects of X on Y being mediated through M1 right here. So when we look at the individual paths, those are referred to as direct effects and you can see that we have a direct effect of a, uh, X on M right here denoted by path A, a direct effect of M1 on Y denoted by path B, and then a direct effect of X on Y denoted by path C. The indirect effect in this model, which is being used to test for mediation, is calculated as the product of paths A and B. The second model is a parallel mediation model, where we have the effect of X on Y being mediated by two variables. So we have M1 right here and M2 right here. So the indirect effect of X on Y via M1 is calculated as a product of paths A and B. The indirect effect of X on Y via M2 is calculated as a product of D and E. And again, the C that we have right here is the remaining direct effect. The last model is a testing for sequential mediation. So in this case, we have the effect of X on Y being mediated three ways. The first uh, uh, route, if you will, uh, involves the product of paths A and E. So in this case, the effect of X on Y is being mediated uh, partially by M1. The second involves paths D and path C right here. So when we take that product, we get a second indirect effect and in this case we are, we are looking at the indirect effect via M2. The last involves a product of paths A, B, and C. So in this case right here we're capturing the sequential mediation because the effect of X goes through M1, through M2, and then to Y. So for our examples, we're going to be using a data set containing continuous measures of student achievement, performance goals, mastery goals, interest, and anxiety. The data set also includes a dummy coded variable reflecting gender identification, but we're not going to be using that for these demonstrations. Uh, again, the data set can be downloaded from the link underneath the video description. So our first model entails a simple uh, mediation where we are testing the effect of mastery goals on achievement via student interest. And we're going to kind of move on here. And the first thing I want to mention before I actually give you sort of a real-time demonstration of process is just some things to look for. So first, once you've installed the macro, you'll find it under the regression option uh, right here. So you'll notice that once you've clicked on that, the box on the right will open up. You'll put your dependent variable Y in the Y variable box, your, dependent, your uh, X variable in the uh, X box right here. So that's our mastery variable. And then we'll put our mediator in this box right here. We'll set the model number to four. So the default is one, so be sure that you reset this. And then also there are options related to confidence intervals and number of bootstrap samples. So if you want to change the confidence interval, uh, you can just by clicking on this little arrow right here. If you want to change the number of bootstrap samples, mainly this is going to be used to test the indirect effects. You can click on this um, button right there. Uh, next, you can also include covariates if you want to, uh, to have them incorporated into to the model as well. Finally, clicking on options, you have various options for testing both uh, models that incorporate both mediation and moderation. For this demonstration, we're just going to click on show total effect model, um, effect size right here, and then standardized coefficients right here. So here I have the data opened up in SPSS. I have the achievement variable, that's my Y variable. My X variable is mastery. The mediator is interest. So what I'm going to do is go to analyze, go to linear, 
process right here. I'm going to go ahead and reset this. So we're going to move achievement to the Y variable box, mastery to the X variable box, interest to the mediators box. We're going to set model number to four and we're going to leave our confidence intervals and the number of bootstrap samples where they are. We'll click under options and go ahead and click those same things that I had in the PowerPoint. So next we'll click on continue and then on OK. So it takes a couple of uh, seconds for the analysis to run uh, mainly because it's carrying out the bootstrapping. Uh, and so now you can see that we have uh, a couple of regression models that are given in our output and those are used to comprise the uh, mediation model. Then we have the total effect model information and then uh, total direct and indirect effects that are given. So rather than trying to strain to see what's what's uh, what in the output, we're going to look at this using our PowerPoint. So for our first uh, part of the output, you'll see the outcome variable is interest. And basically this is a simple regression where interest is regressed onto the mastery variable. So the coefficient that's given is the unstandardized regression coefficient of 0 0.7701. So that's just our path coefficient. That's path A in our model. Uh, you can also see that we've obtained a standardized path coefficient as well. The next regression output is essentially achievement regressed onto both mastery and interest. So basically our X variable and our mediator variable. So we have our regression coefficients that are given right here and so I'm incorporating these uh, right here. So when we substitute those values within into our uh, path diagram, this is what it looks like. So you can see there's path A, there's path B, and then path C right here. So the indirect effect in this model is calculated as a product of paths A and paths B. So that's the indirect effect. And we test this indirect effect by using the bootstrap confidence intervals. And essentially if zero, which is the null hypothesis, if zero falls between the lower bound and the upper bound, then we would maintain the null and infer that the population indirect effect is zero. If, z if uh, the null of zero falls outside of that interval, then we would infer that the population indirect effect is uh, significantly different from zero. So, And that happens to be the case with our example. Next, let me draw your attention to uh, the total effect right here. So the total effect of X on Y, basically mastery goals on achievement, uh, can simply be calculated by summing the indirect effect and the direct effect. So this is basically um, taking the product of A and B and adding uh, path C to it. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit more information. Uh, I'm not going to go through every piece of this, but you can uh, read up on this when you download the PowerPoint. So we're going to move on to example two. So in this case, we are looking at the effect of mastery on achievement via both interest and anxiety. So interest and anxiety are essentially serving as parallel mediators of mastery. So in order to carry out the analysis, we don't do a whole lot different from what we did before. We're leaving our model number as four, but now we're adding in anxiety as a mediator alongside the interest variable. So the resulting output gives us actually two simple regressions and then a multiple regression. So the first simple regression, we have interest regressed onto mastery. So you can see right here, it's the same coefficient, same significance test and everything as we had before. So again, mastery is a significant positive predictor of interest. Uh, this is mastery predicting anxiety. So in this case right here, you see that the indirect effect is, I mean, excuse me, the direct effect is negative. It's negative 0.3992 and it's statistically significant. So basically students higher in mastery goals uh, uh, exhibited lower levels of anxiety. And then the last regression output that you see right here is essentially a regression of achievement onto interest, mastery, and anxiety. So we're essentially regressing achievement onto our X variable and both of our proposed mediators. And so in this particular case right here, you'll notice that um, the direct effect of mastery on achievement is positive and significant. The direct effect of interest on, um, on achievement is positive and significant, but the effect of anxiety on achievement is negative, but it's not statistically significant. Okay, so this portion of the output, you'll notice that we have 
indirect effects of X on Y and you'll see that we have interest and anxiety. Both of these are the names of our mediators so the effects that you see in this column right here are essentially the effects of mastery goals on achievement via each of these mediators. So each of these coefficients that are given are referring to specific indirect effects of mastery on achievement. So you'll notice that uh, going back to interest right here, the indirect effect of mastery on achievement via the interest variable uh, is statistically significant because the null of zero does not fall between the lower and the upper bound. Uh, the eff indirect effect of mastery on achievement via anxiety um, is not statistically significant because zero falls between the lower and the upper bound. And let me note too that when you sum up the two specific indirect effects, they sum up to the total indirect effect of our x variable, in this case mastery on y, that is achievement. So it is possible then that you can have a specific indirect effect not be statistically significant but the total indirect effect be statistically significant. Okay so we're going to move on just uh, note the remaining output is basically interpreted the same way that we did with example one. So for example three we're going to move into sequential mediation. So in this case right here we have the effect of mastery on achievement uh, flowing through interest and anxiety and you can see right here this path B reflecting a sequencing uh, where interest is being ser is serving as a predictor of anxiety so that's capturing when we multiply paths A, B, and C we are capturing that sequential mediation. So to perform uh, our sequential mediation what we're going to need to do is to change the model number to model 6. So we're going to do this right here. Also we need to include the mediators in the mediator box in the order in which they're supposed to appear in the model. So we have interest as the first mediator followed by anxiety. So interest because interest precedes anxiety um, it's, it is the first mediator followed by anxiety. Okay, so now we have our uh, outcome variable interest again being regressed onto mastery. So we have basically the same results as we had before. You can see mastery was a significant positive predictor of the uh, interest variable. The next model, now we have essentially a multiple regression where anxiety is being regressed onto both mastery and interest. So you can see right here that basically mastery is a significant negative predictor of anxiety interest was not related to anxiety. The last outcome that we have right here we have achievement regressed onto all three of our uh, predictors. You may not necessarily see it but anxiety anxiety may be kind of falling off your uh, screen but basically that's the last predictor and you can see that um, essentially mastery again is a significant positive predictor of achievement. Interest is a significant positive predictor of achievement. Anxiety is a non-significant predictor of achievement. So when we substitute the values from those three regressions into our uh, sequential mediation, these are the values that, that show up. So going a little bit further into our output, you'll notice that we have the indirect effects that are given right here. You'll see it says IND1, IND2, and IND3. And the key for those indirect effects are given down here. So IND1, we have mastery predicting interest, which in turn predicts achievement. So that's basically computed by taking path A and multiplying it by path E right there. So that is the first indirect that's given right indirect effect that's given right here. And you can see that that uh, using our bootstrap confidence intervals is statistically significant. The next involves uh, taking mastery, predicting anxiety, and then going to achievement. So that's mastery to anxiety, so that's path D right there, and then anxiety to achievement, that's path C right there. So when we multiply paths D and C uh, right there, then we get the indirect effect that's given here, and you can see that that indirect effect is not statistically significant because zero uh, falls between the lower and the upper bound 
of that confidence interval. The last indirect effect has mastery going to interest, which in turn goes to anxiety, and then to achievement. So in this case, we have path A multiplied by path B multiplied by path C. And so that gives us our last indirect effect. And you can see right here that zero falls between the lower and the upper bound uh, for that particular confidence interval. So that indirect effect would not be statistically significant. Okay, so just really quickly to show that last model in real time, we're going to go to Analyze, Regression, go down to Process again, and in this case, we're going to set the model number to 6, and we're going to be, we've already got interest in there, that's the first mediator, and then we're going to add anxiety next, and so when we click on OK, then we get the output that we saw just a second ago. So here it is. So there are our various regression models. Uh, as we scroll down, you can see there's our direct, total direct and indirect effects of X on Y. Okay, for our last demonstration, let's add in a covariate. So we're going to add performance goals as a covariate in the previous model. So we're going to go to Analyze, Regression, process right here. We're going to move performance goals in as a covariate. So we're going to leave everything else exactly the same. So this is still going to be a, ser a serial mediation, but now we're incorporating a covariate into the model. And we're just going to leave everything else as, as we've um, set it out before. And what you're going to find is, is that uh, each of our previous regressions and the outputs now incorporate performance goals as an additional predictor. So looking at this slide, you can see that we have performance goals predicting interest, anxiety, and achievement. But our, the main mediation that we're uh, interested in testing is mastery. So for the first model, uh, where we have interest as the outcome variable, where interest is regressed onto mastery, that was previously a simple regression. Now it's a multiple regression where performance goals is added into the mix. The second model is anxiety being regressed onto mastery, interest, and now we're adding in performance goals as an additional predictor variable. The last one is achievement being regressed onto mastery, interest, anxiety, and again we're controlling for performance goals. So that pretty much concludes our demonstration. Um, on the last page of the PowerPoint you'll see references, a uh, quick reference to Barron and Kenny. That's a great article. Uh, if you're not familiar with mediation and moderation, that's a great start. And then Andrew Hayes' book, Introduction to Mediation, Moderation, and Conditional Process Analysis, a regression-based approach. And that's a really good book uh, that you should seriously consider consider checking out. Uh, you can also download a copy of the process macro at the link that I'm showing you right here. So thank you for watching.